Alright guys, how's it going? December will be a more relaxing month for me after some fairly epic videos in November and in fact I'd like to do some more fun stuff this month before everything gets crazy again at CES in January. Speaking of which, a certain Lisa Su will be presenting the keynote, AMD's first in their consumer electronics show history. There's good reason for that because in 2019, AMD will catapult computing, gaming and visualisation technologies forward with the world's first 7 nanometer high performance CPUs and GPUs. And if you don't want a spoiler of what those 7 nanometer high performance CPUs and GPUs are, you should switch off now. If you're still here, I would ask that you grab yourself a pinch of salt before watching further. My leaks on Epic and Turing turned out to be very accurate. I knew that the Epic stuff was true. That was zero risk because I trust all the sources completely and they were all telling me the same thing. The Turing leak was risky as it was a hit and run. Basically, the information was dropped on me from a burner email account and that was that. There was no contact before and none since. So I had to analyse that stuff before going with it and my analysis told me that it looked pretty legit regardless of how far out some of it seemed at the time. Nvidia ditching GTX for RTX? Who would have seen that one coming? With this Ryzen 3000 series leak, it's a new source again, hence the salt. Once again, my analysis tells me it's legit. But that may be because a lot of the information appears to back up my previous speculation. So obviously I'd want it to be true. In fact, I was still attempting to validate my leak late last night as another source had appeared a couple of days later on the AMD Reddit. I actually missed it first time around as it was removed due to being a fake. At first glance, there isn't an awful lot of similarities between both leaks. Let me start by showing you what I mean. At the top of the Reddit leak are a bunch of very old names. Some of you watching this may never even have heard of the Duron brand and in a rather bizarre comeback, appears to be tied to some quad-core bulldozer CPUs. That's some pretty strange stuff. Next up are a couple of Athlons based on what looks like the 2200G. The important part begins now. The Ryzen 3 chips of the new series were initially planned as rebranded 4 and 8 thread Zen Plus chips. So the current chips on the 12 nanometer process. There would even have been a Ryzen 5 without and with Vega 11 graphics. The latter basically being a faster version of the current Radeon 5 2400G with higher clock speeds. I think it's safe to say that rebranding those as the Ryzen 5 3000 series would have gone down like a lead balloon. My leak had no mention of any Durons or Athlons, only the upcoming Ryzen 3000 series. According to my leaker, who claims to have the final specifications, this is what the Ryzen 3 3300 lineup ended up as. And I'm sure you all agree it's a far more interesting bunch of CPUs. Introducing the 6 core 12 thread Ryzen 3 3300s. Yep, 6 cores 12 threads for the entry level. What odds would you have put on that 2 years ago? And the cheapest one is 100 bucks. Clock speeds and TDP we can see are 3.2 GHz base and 4 GHz boost for the 3300 non-X at only 50 watts TDP. I'd bet my backside on that being a locked part. The 3300X, 3.5 GHz base and 4.3 GHz boost at 65 watts. Now, I'm sure you'll all agree that in terms of clock speeds, there is nothing here that is particularly earth shattering or even better than the current generation Ryzen 2000 series. This is however the worst silicon and it's pretty low power. But here's where this story gets interesting. According to my source, the X and non-X CPUs use one Zen 2 chiplet and a dummy die. So the same as we were told about Threadripper and its dummy dies. The 3300G comes much later and it is also a single 6 core Zen 2 chiplet but instead of the dummy die comes with a Navi 12 GPU with 15 compute units and it appears to be a very heavily cut down GPU based on the actual Navi 12 die which if WCCF are correct has 40 compute units max. Now I should say that my leak has no mention whatsoever of an IO die. However, if this is legit then this would appear to be confirmation of Zen 2 and Navi chiplets being connected to one because nothing else makes sense. Now moving on to the mid-range Ryzen 5s. 
The Reddit leak here on the right has four CPUs, while mine only has three. However, we can see the reason for that is the inclusion of two G-Class chips. It's not hard to figure out that one of those was likely shifted into the Ryzen 3 lineup as a 3300G, which remember had 15 compute units. According to the Reddit leak, that was originally planned as 14 compute units. That's close enough to be the difference due to better than expected yield. So let's just remove that one and compare them both side by side now. I would possibly have been suspicious of that one compute unit difference. However, the Ryzen 5 3600GX on the Reddit leak, which would of course be the Ryzen 5 3600G in my leak, says that both of them have a 20 compute unit GPU. My leak suggests that this is Navi 12 again, which is what makes sense based on what we suspect of Navi. That should be half of a Navi 12 GPU. And I can't help but think again of how amazing chiplets are gonna be for AMD if they can just throw the defective Navi GPUs into APU silicon rather than having a separate APU die. But ask yourself, what are the chances of two different sources leaking a 20 compute unit GPU on an 8-core, 16-thread Ryzen 5 3600G, or GX chip, if it weren't true. I feel the chances of that are not so high. What's noteworthy is how my leak has higher clock speeds in the non-graphics chips, but much lower clocks in the graphics chips. From a power and performance perspective, that also makes pretty decent sense. Let the non-graphics chips clock higher, as that's what desktop users mostly want. A lot of people are going to buy these 3600s and 3600Xs, then put in a much faster discrete graphics card. Regarding those non-graphics chips, in both my cases, the leaks see a 0.2 GHz increase in the base clock and a 0.3 GHz increase in the boost clock. That's explainable by better binning and simply more accurate knowledge of the wafers. Note that AMD rewarded themselves with a 10 bucks increase in pricing. Now, what is interesting here with the Ryzen 5s though, is the chiplet layout. Unlike with the Ryzen 3s, there are no dummy dies. Obviously, the 3600G has the Navi 12 graphics on the other die, but these other two, the non-X and the X, rather than being a single complete 8-core Zen chiplet, those are two Zen 2 chiplets with four cores each. Feel free to speculate on what that means, but moving on again, this time to the Ryzen 7s, 12 cores and 24 threads. Unless you fell asleep during the Ryzen 5 part, you would of course have figured out that 12 cores was coming next. You'll also have figured out that with the Ryzen 7s, there cannot be any integrated graphics, because the 7s clearly must use two chiplets. Indeed they do. Two binned chiplets with six cores each, according to my source. The Ryzen 7 3700 has a base clock of 3.8 GHz and boost clock of 4.6 GHz at 95 watts, while the 3700X has a base clock of 4.2 GHz and boost clock of 5 GHz at 105 watts. My clock speeds are again up slightly on the older Reddit leak, which again would simply be due to better than expected yield. The main difference appears to be in the boost clock low, and AMD would certainly have wanted to hit that 5 GHz mark. They're giving themselves another reward of 20 to 30 bucks. But with that said, the 3700X still looks massively tempting to many of you, I am sure. And finally, there are of course full 8 core chiplets being used on the desktop too. We've got an all new Ryzen 9 branding, and well, you can see for yourselves. Comparing my two SKUs to the other two SKUs on Reddit, and there's a marked difference in the lower end one. However, the big one, this Ryzen 9 3800X Black Edition, which I believe has been rebranded to the 3850X, or perhaps even the 3850A. 50A for 50th anniversary. Just like I'd suggested probably do. Both of those chips are basically almost identical. Again, just a small bump in the boost clock, but everything else is identical. And just like the 20 compute units here on the Ryzen 5 3600G and the Ryzen 5 3600GX, again, I feel that the chances of two different sources dreaming this up by accident is pretty slim. 4.3 GHz base and around the 5 GHz boost mark with 16 cores and 32 threads, both nailing the $500 price point. So let's take a look at my entire chart. Most of the normal chips, the ones without the GPUs, should be announced at CES 
in a month's time. However, the G chips are coming much later in the third quarter of 2019. That makes sense from the perspective of Navi 12 not yet being manufactured or maybe having just started mass production. I went over the Ryzen 3 TDPs already, 50 watts, 65 watts and 65 watts. And looking at the TDPs of the Ryzen 5s, the 3600, which apparently may still end up getting Ryzen 5 3400 branding, is a 65 watt TDP chip. 3600X is a 95 watt chip, again both being revealed at CES, and the 95 watt Ryzen 5 3600G could end up with 3500G branding instead. But these are the names AMD has settled on for now. Obviously the 3600X looks pretty interesting from the clock speed perspective. It should be clearly ahead of the 2700X, but perhaps not mind-blowingly so. But that really just shows how far we've come in CPU when 4 GHz 16 thread CPUs at not much over 200 bucks don't set the imagination alight. What must Intel be thinking? Looking at the Ryzen 7s and the X appears to be the smart choice. On reflection though, the non-X chips perhaps come with a Wraith cooler again, making them a decent value proposition for system builders. The 3700X though could be the new go-to chip for gamers. This one is pretty enticing. And finally, the new Ryzen 9s. And I don't know about you, but that 3800X looks pretty pricey. 450 bucks against 330? It's just not as enticing as the 3700X. Maybe it is this 5 GHz boost causing that. I mean, okay, you get 33% more cores with the 3800X, but I don't think anyone enjoys losing clock speed at the same time. Boost clock especially. And that's the interesting thing here because boost clocks really should be pretty high, even if the base clocks are lower. So I think what we're looking at here is the difference in silicon quality. By that I mean the 3700X is actually better quality silicon in terms of maximum capability or highest clock speed. But one of the cores ended up with a defect, so it had to be binned down to a Ryzen 7. I feel that the prices of these two chips may come closer together though with the 3700X going up to near 350 or the 3800X coming down to 400, which funnily enough was the price on the Reddit leak of that part. Although the Reddit part was much, much slower. But we'll see about that. The start of the show is obviously the 3850X or 3850, whatever they end up calling it. And of course, this highest end Ryzen 9 part will be announced or launched in May. And yes, this is a real May day for Intel. They have got absolutely no answer to a part like that. None whatsoever. This is some of the best desktop silicon you can get, naturally. Though there may even be faster, more cherry-picked thread rippers. Looking at the Reddit leak and some of those numbers here are mind-boggling. 64 core thread rippers, dual socket no less, with 5 GHz as the base clock? That is surely just a typo. Otherwise, we're looking at 8 chips worth of Miracle Silicon. Hence the $2,000 plus price. A lot of people dismissed this whole chart simply due to this. And honestly, I wouldn't blame them for doing that, as it looks pretty unlikely. My leak, however, had absolutely no information on Threadripper. But honestly, looking at the whole table, there is nothing there which stands out as being totally unreasonable to me. We've been told to expect 25% plus clock speeds from TSMC, but if we compare, say, the Ryzen 5 3600X, to the current 2700X, then we're only seeing around 8% uplift in base clock and 12% in boost clock. This is however the mid-range 7nm silicon compared to the high-end 12nm silicon. So that all checks out as being pretty reasonable, I feel. It's really at the upper mid-range level, especially the Ryzen 7 3700X, where the 7nm chiplets start to shine a bit. 4.2 GHz base and 5 GHz boost is 16% over the 2700X, but with 50% more cores on top. We can clearly see the result of binning the chiplets in multiple ways. The worst silicon regarding clock speeds goes to the Ryzen 3s, of course. Then the Ryzen 5s get those chips with multiple defects, but that still has decent clock speeds in the working cores. The really high quality silicon doesn't come in until the Ryzen 7s, and to be fair, that is reflected in pretty high increases in the price points. This Ryzen 9 3800X at 3.9 GHz base and 4.7 GHz boost and 125 watts. I could pretty much have predicted that. 
if I didn't already. The base and boost clocks are 11% and 7% higher than the current 2950X. However, TDP is down by 44% on top of that. I did say in the recent Ryzen brainstorming video that I felt these 16 core chips would need new motherboards to get the most out of them. And again, it does appear that this is what has happened, with my source noting that the Ryzen 9 lineup will be limited to B550 and X570 motherboards, and those motherboards will feature dual 4-pin CPU connectors. So AM4 compatibility will be maintained, but it looks like only up to 12 cores and 24 threads. It's just too much power. These two chips are going to break current AM4 spec, and that's why you're going to need a B550 or an X570. Or at least that'll be AMD's excuse for it. But obviously, it's not hard to see why I like this leak overall, as it is very close to a lot of my speculation on multiple levels. With the final one being the extremely cherry-picked silicon for the Ryzen 9 3950X. At first I didn't like that name, ending in a 50 is never a good idea. However, we are of course talking about the 50th anniversary edition, so it makes even more sense here. In silicon terms, it's clearly the best stuff, same as the Intel anniversary chip, the 8086K. But 16 cores and 32 threads at 4.3GHz base is outstanding for 135 watts. But that is the benefit that speed binning chiplets brings. When you put all the information together, you may think, well, anyone watching and paying attention to my videos over the last month or so could have come to similar conclusions. And to be honest, if I was going to fake a leak on Ryzen 3000, it would have looked a lot like this. But the main reason why I decided I liked this leak was down to specific information on the branding. If you think back to the 2700X launch and the lack of a 2800X, that had us all confused. But apparently the reason why there was no 2800X is because AMD wanted to distance the X700 and X800 series in order to make room for the Ryzen 9 lineup with X800 branding instead. I didn't ask my source who he works with or where, and I never do. But information like this can only come from certain people in the know. So if all of this is true, and I haven't been expertly played, Chiplets are confirmed on the desktop too, possibly for Navi 2 it seems, and certainly it appears Navi 12 was designed to be used as a graphics portion of these two, which could mean my no integrated memory controller theory is also true. It would also appear Ryzen 3000 is closer to release than we thought. One of my epic leakers contacted me with clock speed information today, saying that in most cases, the clock speeds are within a couple hundred megahertz of Naples, and that the fastest ROM part is faster than the fastest Naples part. While that alone is great to hear, it also basically confirms that AMD has got this Ryzen 2 B silicon ready, and likely in good enough shape to go ahead with mass production. That's why they've now got the final numbers. They've got a bunch of wafers back, they've analysed the wafers, and they've figured out how they can basically make the most money out of binning each chip. So they are likely ready to go ahead with mass production. In fact, I'll be quite surprised if Lisa doesn't say Zen 2 is already in mass production during her CES keynote. So that is it for the Ryzen 3000 series, and I can't wait to find out if it comes true. At the end of this video, I'll take a look at a little bonus leak. But before that, you remember my custom mini ITX build last year, where I told you the story of how Brian from the USA decided to build his own chassis from scratch. He had kept me updated over almost a whole year as he learned all about the process. And at the end of that, I decided to take one of his S400 cases off his hands and review it. I still use it as my LAN PC, as it is more than powerful enough for stuff like that, and it just looks amazing. Well, Brian kept going with the case building, and he has his own website, Salvo Studios, currently flagshipped by his S401, the updated model of the S400 I reviewed. Possibly the most impressive aspect of the S401 is how he managed to drive the price down, from $225 of the S400 to $165 of the S401, all the while adding SFXL PSU support, support for wider GPUs up to 140mm, adding more fan mounts and better airflow period due to the half inch hex pattern and there's a whole bunch of other improvements on the design in the S401. And if you want, you can add a custom acrylic vented side panel too for around about 30 bucks. 
Honestly, I think it just looks absolutely great. And as a disclaimer, I'm receiving no payment for saying this. Brian did offer me one, and he did also offer to pay me to review it. However, I declined both offers as I just don't have time to build and review hardware any longer. You can, however, check out another comprehensive review of it over at the Small Form Factor Network. And Brian himself has a build video on it. I'll put all the relevant links in the video description below. He doesn't have very many left, maybe around 30 or so I think, and it could be even less now. And they are likely to sell pretty fast now that I've mentioned it, so if you are after a great looking ITX case offering true high-end gaming capability, then I wouldn't wait too long. Especially as this video could see an awful lot of views due to the leak. And getting back to the leaks, and to finish this video off, some more on Navi. Apparently there will be three Navi based GPUs announced at CES. Two of them are based on the smallest chip, Navi 12, that we also see with the Ryzen chips. The first card, the entry level one, will be the AMD Radeon RX 3060. I'm not really sold on this branding, but apparently that's what they decided on. It's gonna cost $129.99, based on Navi 12 and coming with 4GB of GDDR6. And apparently, 75 watts TDP and it doesn't require an additional power connector. The performance of this part is equivalent to an RX 580. The second card, based on the same Navi 12 GPU, is the Radeon RX 3070. That's $199 with 8GB of GDDR6 and 120W TDP, with performance apparently equivalent to an RX Vega 56 and costing $199.99. And the final card mentioned was the AMD Radeon RX 3080. This one is based on the Navi 10 GPU and again comes with 8GB of GDDR6. R6. It's got 150 watts of TDP and for $249.99 you're going to get performance about 10% to 15% better than that of an RX Vega 64. Now the intended competition, the RX 3060, should compete against the GTX 2050 and also the surplus of GTX 1060s going around. The RX 3070 should compete against the GTX 2060 and also a surplus of GTX 1070s, and the RX 3080 should compete against the RTX 2070, and also the surplus of 1070 Ti's and 1080s. Now, analysing that, first of all, the smallest chip Navi 12. RX 580 performance without a power connector is definitely a game changer in that segment, and it made me realise that actually, Navi is going to make a difference to the status quo. AMD might not beat the 2080 Ti in all of 2019, but unless Nvidia gets some 7 nanometer cards out, can't see how they'll be able to compete with that kind of performance and power. These are the cards that OEMs love. Those little cards with no power connectors. That's why the 750 Ti still sells millions of cards. And these small cards have been some of AMD's best sellers in the past as well. Obviously, the RX 3070, with Vega 56 performance and 120 watts of power under 200 bucks, that is pretty enticing stuff as well. Competing against the GTX 2060 in performance and power, I think that's a hard fight for Nvidia to win due to the older 12 nanometer process. Nvidia will of course still outsell AMD by 5 to 1. The RX 3080 coming in between a GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti at 150 watts of power is Pretty close, if not identical, to what I suggested in the last video for the PlayStation 5 chip. We'll see about that. But regardless, that looks like a pretty compelling part. People will say that this is too good to be true, but there's nothing earth shattering here. It's 15% faster than a GTX 1080 with maybe 15% less power. That is well within the expectations of the 7 nanometer node. And AMD seems to be quite happy about Navi. So much so that apparently they ditched consumer Vega 7 nanometer cards, which would have been competing with Nvidia's Turing instead. But all of that stuff and more will come in a future video after much of this current stuff is confirmed. For now though, I'm done with this one, and as I said at the top of the video, I'll be looking at doing some other stuff this month, unless we end up bombarded with more leaks in the run-up to CES. I'll catch you later, guys.